What's up guys? The Super Bowl is where legends are made and where hearts are shattered. It's the dream of every football player to play in the Super Bowl. It's the dream of every fan to see their team hoist the Lombardi Trophy. It's every player's nightmare to lose a Super Bowl in a heartbreaking fashion. And it's the nightmare of every fan to see their team lose a Super Bowl after coming so close. I'm Jason Biondo and today we present the 10 saddest and most heartbreaking Super Bowl endings. Don't forget to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications because we host videos every single single day. Every day is a new video, so you should definitely subscribe. Why would you not? Great sports content all the time. Do it. Number 10, Super Bowl 44. Colts can overcome series of mistakes. Super Bowl 44 featured the Indianapolis Colts versus the New Orleans Saints. Two all-time greats in Peyton Manning and Drew Brees went toe-to-toe -to -toe in Miami. The Sheriff was looking for ring number two, while the Saints were looking for their first Super Bowl in franchise history. The Colts jumped out to a 10-0 lead, and they looked poised to win it all. But a bundle of mistakes in the second half opened the door for a New Orleans comeback. It all started when the Colts failed to secure a gutsy onside kick by the Saints at the start of the second half. It continued when Matt Stover missed a 51-yarder. That would have put the Colts up by four in the fourth quarter. Breeze and the Saints marched down the field to score a go-ahead touchdown, giving them a 24-17 lead with 5.42 left. Manning and the Colts drove into Saints territory and looked poised to tie things up. But once again, Indianapolis made a crucial mistake at the worst possible possible time when Manning threw a pick six to Tracy Porter. That sealed the game for the Saints who capitalized on all the Colts mistakes to win their very first Super Bowl. Number nine, Super Bowl 38 Panthers Cinderella run ends. The 2003 Carolina Panthers looked poised to become one of the most improbable feel good Cinderella stories ever. Led by Jake Delhomme and Steve Smith, this team steamrolled through the NFC playoffs, setting up a match with Tom Brady and the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 38. The powerhouse Pats were looking for their second Super Bowl in three years years. And when they led 21-10 early in the fourth quarter, the game appeared to be all but over. But this wild fourth quarter saw the teams go back and forth. The Panthers responded with consecutive touchdown drives to go up by one. The Patriots responded with a touchdown drive of their own to go up by seven. Carolina tied with 143 left. When Delholm hit Ricky Prohl for a 12-yard touchdown. But kicker John Casey made a big mistake when he booted the ball out of bounds on the kickoff. That gave Brady a short field and he set up Adam Vinatieri to be a hero once again in the Super Bowl. And with that, Carolina's Cinderella story came to an abrupt end. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Pats throughout the big game, but Brady and Vinatieri rose to the occasion when it mattered most. An absolutely crushing loss for the Patriots team that was oh so close to finishing the miracle run. Number 8, Super Bowl 47, 49ers epic comeback falls short. There were so many epic storylines heading into Super Bowl 47, which featured the San Francisco 49ers and Baltimore Ravens. Some called it the Super Ba and Harbaugh, since brothers and head coaches John and Jim Harbaugh were pitted against one another on the grandest stage. It was also the final NFL games for future Hall of Famers Ray Lewis and Randy Moss. I know, this game became infamous for a power outage at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome that delayed the game a half an hour. Anyway, the game itself was shaping up to be a boring blowout. The Ravens led 28-6 in the third quarter, but Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers mounted a comeback. San Francisco cut the lead to five points, and the Ravens later extended their lead to 31-23. After trading scores, the Ravens led 34-29 with just over four minutes to go. Kaepernick pieced together a remarkable drive that put the 49ers on the cusp of their sixth Super Bowl. But an excellent Baltimore goal line stand, coupled with a controversial non-call for pass interference on fourth and goal, prevented the 49ers from finishing the incredible comeback. The Ravens would melt most of the clock, surrender an intentional safety, and stop Ted Ginn on the punt return to secure the Lombardi Trophy. The 49ers lost a Super Bowl game for the first time ever. Ever, and it couldn't have come in a much more heartbreaking fashion. Number seven, Super Bowl 23, Bengals can't stop Joe Cool. Joe Montana and the San Francisco 49ers won their first Super Bowl by taking down the Cincinnati Bengals seven years earlier. Super Bowl 23 featured a rematch between Montana's 49ers and the Bengals, who were led by MVP quarterback Boomer Esiason. The Bengals head on to a 16-13 lead with just over three minutes to go. Just one more stop on defense and Cincinnati would win its very first Super Bowl. But Montana did what he always does best. Deliver when it matters most. And Jerry Rice gashed the Cincinnati defense and it set the stage for John Taylor's historic game-winning touchdown. And with that, Montana and the 49ers won their third Super Bowl, while the Bengals botched their chance at finally reaching the top. The Cincinnati franchise has never really been the same since that loss. Number six, Super Bowl 51. It was 28 to three. When the Atlanta Falcons jumped out to a 28-3 lead in Super Bowl 51, it all seemed over. No way 
way the legendary Tom Brady could battle his team back from this, right? No way the Patriots erase a 25 point deficit with a quarter and a half to go. Well, the Falcons and their fans saw the lead gradually slip away with mistake after mistake after mistake. Here's a recap of these mistakes Atlanta made. Matt Ryan strip sacked on third and one in Atlanta territory, up by 16 points. Patriots go down to score, cut the lead in half. Falcons drive down into field goal range. Ryan gets sacked. Falcons take holding penalty. Atlanta punts after falling out of field goal range. Still an eight point game. Robert Alford drops easy game ceiling pick. Ball bounces to Julian Edelman for phenomenal catch. And so that set up more Tom Brady heroics, as it always seems to do. The Patriots won the coin toss at the start of overtime. And to the surprise of nobody, the Patriots would put this game away. And Atlanta, like a handful of teams on this list, blew its shot at winning the franchise's first Super Bowl. All they had to do was well, you know, not screw up a bunch of times. Or simply run the ball one or two more times than they actually did. Either way, 28-3 will not be lived down in Atlanta anytime soon. They simply blew it because they were unable to stop Tommy Terrific when it mattered most. Number five, Super Bowl 43. Cardinals almost end the drought. The Cardinals franchise hasn't won an NFL championship or Super Bowl since the 1947 season. They endured decades of mediocrity and hardship, but it finally looked like more than half a century of pain was about to come to an end in Super Bowl 43. The Cardinals squared off against the Pittsburgh Steelers, who were vying for Lombardi Trophy number six. This game looked overish midway through the fourth quarter, with Pittsburgh leading by 13 points. But Kurt Warner found Larry Fitzgerald for a pair of touchdowns. The second one coming with 2.37 left. Arizona was up 23 to 20, needing just one defensive stop to clinch their very first Super Bowl. But Ben Roethlisberger and Santonio Holmes had something to say about that. The Cardinals had the Super Bowl in their hands, but they had no answer for Holmes and the Steelers wound up escaping with a 27 to 23 victory. Warner and Fitzgerald did everything they could to erase six decades of pain in the Cardinals franchise. But nope, the Steelers wouldn't let it happen. Number four, Super Bowl 42. Perfection no more. The 2007 New England Patriots were the most dominant team in NFL history. Plain and simple. They won 16 and 0 in the regular season, cruised through their first two playoff games, and met the New York Giants in Super Bowl 42. Tom Brady threw a then record 50 touchdown passes. Randy Moss set a record with 23 touchdown receptions. And no, oh, their 589 points scored were the most in NFL history. Now they just had to hold off the Giants to become the first 19-0 club in history, which would cement them as the greatest team ever. Brady hit Moss for a go-ahead touchdown with under three minutes left, putting New England up 17-14. Then some guy named Eli Manning and wide receiver David Tyree teamed up for the greatest catch in NFL history. The little-known Tyree jumped up and made the infamous helmet catch. That gave the Giants a second chance. A few plays later, Manning found Plaxico Burris in the end zone for the late game winning score. The Giants would hold off the Patriots' historic offense in the final half minute, pulling off the improbable 17 to 14 win. The Patriots may have already had three Super Bowls over the previous six years, but this one really stung. They were only one or two plays away from winning it all and becoming the most dominant team in NFL history with zero losses, but it wasn't meant to be. I'm a Jets fan, but shout out to Eli. That was dope. Number three, Super Bowl 34, one yard short. Super Bowl 34 between the St. Louis Rams and Tennessee Titans was quite dull for the first three quarters. The Rams shut down Steve McNair and co for the entire first half. Eddie George finally broke the shutout with a one yard touchdown in the third quarter. The Titans then sparked a comeback in the fourth quarter, scoring 10 points in order to tie it up at 16 all. The tie didn't last long, however, as Kurt Warner hit Isaac Bruce for a 73 yard touchdown with just under two minutes to go. That left plenty of time on the clock for McNair and and he orchestrated a surgical drive to put the Titans in position to force overtime. With six seconds to go, Tennessee stood at the St. Louis 10-yard line. They had time for one play to score and force overtime. McNair hit Kevin Dyson on a slant and he reached for the goal line. But Mike Jones of the Rams made the game-saving tackle, holding Tyson one yard short of the goal line and securing the Rams' first Super Bowl championship ever. That was the last time Tennessee reached the Super Bowl. The team was oh so close to getting it done but Dyson couldn't pick up the biggest yard of his life. Jones and the Rams weren't having any of it. Number two, Super Bowl 49, run it. Some may argue that this should be number one, but the Seattle Seahawks had won the Super Bowl of the year before, so it takes like a bit of the heartbreak out. There's a big difference between blowing a chance to win your first Super Bowl and blowing a chance to repeat. So anyway, the Seahawks looked poised to take down the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 49. They were up by 10 points midway through the fourth quarter, only to see Tom Brady lead his team on 
consecutive touchdown drives. Russell Wilson drove his team downfield, highlighted by an unreal circus catch from Jermaine Curse. Marshawn Lynch ran the ball down to the half yard line. They needed less than a yard to win the Super Bowl. Hand the ball off to Lynch and make it happen. Right? Not right. Nope. The Seahawks ran the dumbest play in NFL history, and it cost them a Super Bowl. All they had to do was hand the ball to Lynch once, twice, or maybe even three times. Beast mode would have surely gotten them a half yard line on three tries. But no. Not only did Seattle blow its chance of repeating, they also hurt the chances of retaining a dynasty. Former Seahawks such as Lynch, Cliff Avril, and Richard Sherman weren't able to get over the loss, and many of them were critical of Wilson and Pete Carroll. Even several of the players from this 2014 Seattle team said that Wilson's costly Super Bowl pick broke up what could have been a dynasty. It's kind of hard to argue with that. This team should have won at least two Super Bowls together, and perhaps more. Number one, Super Bowl 25 wide right. We had to put this at number one for multiple reasons. Considering how close the Buffalo Bills were, and how much they've fallen apart since that loss, it only makes sense to put this game atop the list. The Bills reached four consecutive Super Bowls in the 90s. They lost every single one of them. But why is Super Bowl 25 the most heartbreaking of them all? Because it's the only one where the Bills actually had a chance at winning. This game featured Jim Kelly and Buffalo's historic no-huddle offense against Lawrence Taylor's historically dominant defense. The Bills trailed 20 to 19 with just over two minutes left. But Jim Kelly and company drove down the field and set up kicker Scott Norwood for a chance to be a Super Bowl hero. Norwood lined up for a 47-yard field goal to win the game, but it went wide right. And with that, the Bills lost the Super Bowl in devastating fashion. They were simply one play away. They'd be blown out in the next three Super Bowls. And the Bills franchise has been one of North America's worst ever since. But really, nothing will hurt the Bills more than this one. Norwood was just a few yards away from changing the franchise's fortunes forever. But it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. Four times, though? <laughs> like, really? Which do you think is the most heartbreaking loss in Super Bowl history? Join us in the comment section below. Join us! Comment down below. We want to hear them all. Make sure to follow myself and Total Pro sports on social media. We post great content all the time. All the time. Go follow us. Go check it out at least. At least go look at our profiles and be like, oh, I like that Instagram. Oh, I like that tweet. I have to follow you guys. You guys are so great. Oh my God, I love you guys. I'm such a fan. That's exactly what's going to happen, right? If you like this video, make sure to like it. it. Takes one click right down below. Right there. I'm looking at it right now. You gotta click it. Just do it. If this is your first time around TPS, make sure to subscribe because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video. So you have to subscribe. Go subscribe. Do it. You have to. You don't have to, but like, please. Red button below. Do it. Of course, thanks so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo, and I'll see you next time. My knee.